What's up guys? My name is Pai Jirsa. I'm one of the founding partners of Lynn and Jirsa Photography, as well as slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with our good friends at B&H to bring you five nighttime portrait photography techniques in five minutes. So we're gonna jump in. Now, don't go home just because it got dark. Shooting at dusk or at nighttime is one of the best times to capture creative portraits. In general, you're gonna wanna open up your aperture, slow down your shutter speed, and raise your ISO for your ambient light exposure. Next, set your exposure to your creative taste, and ideally for nighttime scenes, we want it just a little bit darker than the subjects so that they pop. Now, let's bring on the tips. Number one. Bust out those soft boxes because during the day, a little flash like this would lack the power to light through a modifier like a soft box. But at nighttime, we can grab a Westcott Rapid Box or a Magmod Magbox, throw it over the flash, and create beautifully soft and portable light. I know flash power can be a bit tricky, so for flash power, start with the inverse of your ISO when shooting wide open, let's say at F2. So what we're gonna do is if we are at 1600 ISO, we're gonna shoot, at least start our flash power at 1 16th flash power. Now, of course, it's gonna depend on distance and aperture, but it's a good place to start nonetheless. For the scene here, we're using a light that's basically placed 45 degrees off to camera left. So here are the subjects, here's our field of view, and the light is just placed right here off to the side. Notice that the backgrounds are left just a little bit darker so that the subjects pop from the scene. Number two, create your own motion with a technique that we call the whip pan. Here's what you're gonna do. Find a background with lights, place your camera onto a tripod and slow the shutter down to around one half second. When you press the shutter, you're gonna swivel the camera left and right quickly. Test this out and adjust the shutter to modify the exposure or the length of the light trails as desired. Once you have your settings, place your subject in the darkest area of your frame, and then you're gonna blast them with flash. Here we're using a backlight, it's at full power, to create a rim or an outline around them. Again, a flash just like this one is gonna be completely adequate for this type of a shot. Number three is to show city motion with the shutter drag. So similarly, start with a slow shutter speed between one and five seconds. Again, the camera needs to be on a tripod. Position the camera frame where moving objects like cars can pass through the frame. Here, we're lighting our subjects down below for a silhouette type effect while we drag the shutter to show off the busy bustle of the city around them. Number four is to create silhouettes using a backflash. Rather than directly lighting your subjects, light the wall or the surface behind them. So if this is our camera angle and our subjects are standing right here, rather than light into the subjects and field of view, we're gonna hide a flash behind one or both people that's gonna fire directly into the wall behind them. So here's the wall. For this specific shot, we're using a CTO to warm up that light and then we're dialing down the in-camera white balance to make it look like nighttime. This is a technique known as shooting day for night. Number five is what I call the blooming backlight. Now, one of my favorite techniques is to bring the backlight right up to the subject. So essentially, if you have your camera here and your subjects are here, Rather than placing the flash somewhere back here, you're gonna bring the flash directly up to the subject. So it's like literally right behind their shoulders. You're gonna light into one of their chests and ideally you're gonna pick the chest that has the brighter clothing so that way the light kind of bounces off and wraps around the subjects. What we wanna do is be careful that we don't get too much highlights underneath the chin, so we're gonna do two things. One, the pose is generally gonna work best when we lean their heads together, close their eyes, and two, if we have too much light spill under the chin, we're gonna add a grid onto it. 
The Magmod Grid and the Magmod Sphere are wonderful modifiers for this technique. Finally, as our last bonus tip, you guys can take these techniques and actually blend them. For example, here we're using the blooming backlight lighting technique along with the whip pan to create this final image. I hope you all like this video. If so, please give it a like, subscribe to the BNH channel and comment below letting us know what videos you guys would like to see in the future. Also, be sure to check out our channel at SR Lounge on YouTube. My name is Pi and I'll see you guys in the next video.